Hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Victorio Space Exploration. In the last episode, I got to the point where I had most of the basics for a base um, being built on automatically on the bus. So we've got the things like the assembly machines, the inserters, the belts, they're all coming in automatically. Uh, but I am running out of power, so I think it's time to... And, um, I think I want to build up a radar as well. So the idea is the radar will allow me to see what's going on around my base without having to actually go there myself. So I'll put one in at each end eventually. eventually. But in the meantime, we need to get some more power as well because the, the we're using up significantly more than we're um, than we're producing from the uh, from the um, from that one generator. So we've boosted up to three of them now. Got those all running, and there we go. There we've got more than enough power now, so that's okay. It's a bit of a worry. I, possibly I need some way of telling when I'm running low on power so that I can um, have, so, I, so that I know that I need to go in and put something in like that in. As far as I'm aware, though, I, I'm not aware. I'm not aware of a way of doing it that doesn't involve using accumulators and their technology that I've not unlocked yet. So that's going to be quite some way off. Still, let's have a look at steam power because that's going to um, allow. Apparently, it's more more efficient. At the end of the last episode, I was talking about defences and walls and things around the base. So I think that's something I'm going to want to look at at some point in this episode. But first, let's try and get. Um, what's this? This is coal. Let's try and get some coal onto the bus because that'll. Uh, allow me to... I've forgotten what I needed that for. I'm sure there's something I needed it for. <laughs> oh well, we'll uh, work it out in a minute. This is the advantage of having the um, the belts on the bus. Every time uh, every time I run out of them I can just grab another 200 out of the box there, which is fantastic. Ah yes, this is what I'm doing. So on the subject of, subject of uh, getting defences up and running, this is one of my standard um, belts with coal on one side and ammunition on the other that I'm putting together here. So the idea behind this is that you can um, just run a single belt out to wherever you want to have your defences and then you can, and, uh, and you can use burner inserters to, to just keep the um, all of your turrets running. And there's two reasons to use burner inserters. One is so that you don't have to run um, uh, pylons out there as well because you don't because they don't need electricity because they're, they're burner ones, they run off coal. And the second one is actually technically burner inserters are slightly more efficient because normal inserters have a small amount of power draw while they're running. Uh, sorry, while they're not running, whereas burner inserters only actually use the coal up when they are running. So for things that don't run very often, like like inserters uh, on a, for a turret, it's, it's technically better to use the burner ones, especially if the, sp the speed doesn't matter. Um, and Uh, there was another reason. I had another reason, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> so that was a quick run out to have a look around, ex explore the uh, surrounding area a bit, just to get an idea of where I'm going to get biter attacks from. Because with my bus going this way, I do basically intend to expand out to the east. I've also got that large patch of iron out to the east that I'm probably going to want to go and build a mine on relatively soon, just to make sure my iron production stays up and running. Although at the moment, as you can see, it's, it's doing okay, but once I start building huge amounts of ammunition, that's probably going to change quite quickly. Ammunition, especially early on in the game, ammunition is one of the biggest sort of constant drains you get on your um, on, on your iron supply. And so it's a bit of a it, it can it can feel a bit tricky to keep that going. Yep, here we go. As, as part of the the getting uh, getting defence up and running, I'm automating turret production because it just takes so long to build all of those in your pockets. Looking at this, I should probably get um, what are these pylon production up and uh, up and automated as well because this is a bit. A bit of a faff having to do, having to make more manually, and then and then when I want to make something else like an iron box, it's a, it's an it's annoying because I'm already building pylons and I have to clean them out of the way. So that's probably something I should put on the bus quite soon. I don't think I've done that this episode though. Eh, we'll get to it. We'll get round to it, I'm sure. Maybe once we've um, moved on to steel pylons because they're a bit more um, I don't know, they're a bit more long term useful. So my wall supply is coming along reasonably well, I think. Carrying a lot of coal around with me, I should probably get rid of that. Uh, put it into, uh, but at least I, I can just dump it into the, all the um, the furnaces, so that's fairly easy. Having a bit of a think about um, electronic circuits as well, because those are. Th I know that later, fairly soon, I'm going to need enormous quantities of electronic circuits, um, the, the basic ones. Now the recipes are a bit different in this mod pack. Instead of being um, an iron substrate for the circuit boards, we've got a. Um, it seems we've got. We have a choice between either wood. Or um, or stone, so I've decided. To, I think I decided to go with stone, uh, which which is stone bricks, because um, 
I've already got stone on my bus, or stone bricks rather, on, on the bus. So it's going to be a bit easier to um, to pull that off than it will be to pull off a different resource. So I'm setting up here. There's <laughs> a bit of frustration here because I couldn't I couldn't quite fit the um, the, the because the the um, yellow underground belts will only go across four tiles before then I have to pop back up again. I need I had a bit of a problem with um, getting across all of that fancy uh, stuff I was doing. I probably should have just moved the whole thing up a little bit. But uh, yes, anyway, I didn't. <laughs> uh, so the um, having a look at the. Uh, the requirements for these stone uh, for the st stone based um, circuits at the moment which is a weird thing to build circuits out of I have to say so it turns out that looking at the, uh, the speed ratios you need three machines producing copper wire um, to every machine producing circuits and you need a quarter of a machine producing the stone um, stone substrates per quarter of a circuit as well so as uh, per, per circuit so I can I can run f I could potentially run four circuit production machines off one um, stone plate whatever it, whatever it calls it machine and then I'd need an additional three um, copper wire machines for each of those however because of sort of the layout I decided to just go with three of them so this seems to be a reasonably this is reasonably close to the right um, the correct ratios although I could fit a fourth set of um, copper wire and uh, what do you call it uh, green circuit machines on there if I, if I had the if I had the space but it seemed a bit tricky to fit it in maybe, maybe um, when I get on to using them in much larger quantities I'll try and find a slightly more efficient way of laying this out of course by then I might have speed modules as well we'll uh, we'll see how that goes I don't know why I put quite so much effort into trying to be, to be as efficient as possible with the uh, pylons because they're, they're cheap and okay it looks a bit messy when you have loads of them but they are very very cheap and it's easy, something it would be easy just to splash them in all over the place but never mind there we go bring them catch the bus up right and we now have uh, green circuits automated they're not coming through at a particularly high rate, but then I'm not using them at a high rate either. In fact, I'm not using them at all. So it's going to be a little while until I until I need a lot of them. All right, let's have a look at glass. Uh, something I it's the, it's the next thing on the, on the list essentially because it's right at the beginning of the uh, the research line. And with these green circuits and the walls being um, both running off the uh, stone bricks, I'm going to need a bit more um, stone production and going in here. So I'm going to add that in. Uh, what's this for? Oh, oh, this is this is because I might be pulling out a bit of copper as well. So we we're using the the standard split there on the um, on the splitter and uh, the filter on the splitter rather to send any uh, any random uh, unexpected copper down the down the belt towards the <coughs> uh, down the belt towards the rest of the mines where it'll be go go into the normal system and just be filtered out. So I was trying to find out how to make lamps at this point. Um, but I, I searched for light, which didn't really work, um, and then I searched for optics, oh, and then I found optics, afterwards, which it has worked. So well, yeah, because as you can see, it's got rather dark because it's night time, and I'm not cheating with um, with always day in this particular run through. And I'm also going to research um, electric labs as well because that's uh, I'm not going to say it's, it's absolutely vital, but it's nice to have, and it does make things a lot nice, easier when you can see what you're doing at night. Why am I splitting out stone here? I can't remember. Oh yes, this is. Um, I decided it was time to start making glass as well, uh, which is made from sand, which is made from stone. Uh, so that's that's a set of assembly machines to do the um, turn it into sand. Oh, since we don't seem to have crushers in this mod pack, and then for, and then bog standard furnaces to turn it into um, what do we call it? Into in, into glass from there, which, which uh, makes kind of sense. So the um, the crushing is about three times as fast as the smelting, uh, which is a bit of a shame because there isn't. Without going to sort of weird lengths like I did with the circuits, there isn't really room to get enough um, enough furnaces in along the along the row here. But I've decided that assembly machines are cheap enough that I don't really care if they're not working absolutely flat out. Um, I have also remembered that I'm going to need to be taking in coal along here for, to power the furnaces, so that's going to be slightly um, challenging. The problem I ran into here was fitting in the up uh, the pylons <laughs> because they're um, they only have a range of sort of two squares across and I'm getting attacked bloody fighters at least they're going for the belts and the belts are quite cheap um, <laughs> and now I can uh, yeah I can repair the damage they've done relatively quickly 
Anyway, so yes, trying to fit the pylons in is a bit of a faff because they're um, the the wooden pylon, the basic pylons only have a range of well, it's a five by five square. So what I'm doing here is <laughs> is putting in a load of underground belts in order to get the pylons in that little bit closer, which is a bit of a pain, but yeah, what can you do? Run the power down there, and that should do it. Yep, the uh, furnaces have all lit up, and now so now we can put in another belt to take the um, take the glass down. Try and get the keep pylons out the way, and add the glass onto the bus as normal. I'm going in here with a gap because I don't want to, I want it to be on a different level to the um, to the green circuits, just in case just in case I ever need to take the green circuits the other way, perhaps for more advanced inserters or something like that. But there we go. That's the uh, that's a nice steady production of glass happening. Now I think it's time to have a bit more of a think about defences, because those biters keep coming in and messing up everything. Well, eat, eating the belts, which is, as I said, it's not the end of the world. There are worse things they could attack, but it's, it's, it's still a bit of an annoyance. So I'm going to put in a wall for now. Like that. As ever, I'm terrible at drawing straight lines to the mouse, it turns out. But that, that wall will work quite nicely. Um, they'll keep the, it won't keep the biters out because they'll eat their way through it um, relatively quickly. But it will slow them down enough that I'll get an early warning when they're attacking. Now it's time for the next part of the uh, the wall. Through, through, the, through the forest up here. <laughs> I sometimes wonder if I could just leave the trees in as part of the wall. And whether, but I'd, um, I don't know if... Oh dear, I'm getting attacked again already. Yep, they're attacking the walls. So that was my early warning. Unfortunately, they move rather quickly, <laughs> so the early warning doesn't isn't well. It, it, it isn't very early, put it that way. And they get again. They're going for that bit of um, bit of belt. I don't really understand why, because I was under the impression that biters were supposed to go for and were only were generally supposed to attack um, uh, things that produce pollution. So they go for furnaces and miners and drill and um, that sort of thing and generators and th anything, basically anything that's producing uh, producing the pollution. Belts don't. I, I do know that if they run across a belt and it annoys them because it tries to make them go in a direction they don't want to, then they'll get annoyed and attack it. But uh, what usually one or two belts like that isn't enough to cause that sort of reaction. Anyway, in an attempt to make the uh, defences a little bit more effective, I'm going to put in some gun turrets. So we're uh, running, running my ammunition belt along here. Got a splitter in there, to, because there's going to be two different ways it's going to go. So we're, I'm going to have, I'm going to need defences on both sides of this lake, and we'll put in some turrets. I'm just use the uh, ghost to measure to make sure they're the right um, distance apart. But I don't want to leave them in there because later on, when I get bots, I'll just end up with lots of unexpected turrets. That's always a little bit silly. Just run the belt all the way along. Get rid of some of this junk that's been... So, sorry, some of the landscaping. Let's use a nicer term <laughs> that's in the way along here. And slap some turrets in. I've learnt now what the gap is that I need, and I can tell I'm judging it using the um, the range indicator on the turrets and an extra one at the end. So this way, the turrets all will all just cover each other. So if any anywhere that a biter appears, it should have at least two turrets shooting at it. There is some of the stone I'm carrying around. And as I said earlier, I'm using the burner inserters to, uh, to keep the turrets stocked. Right, so the next thing, I've noticed now there's, there is a way through in that southwest corner. Uh, there's a couple of bridges between the uh, the mainland and my uh, peninsula. So I'm going to need to run the, um, the wall down there as well, which is a bit of an annoyance. Um, but it's not too too bad. But first I'm going to um, start making lamps auto automatically. Um, if I can work out how, which I can't because that's the wrong number of um, construction machines. Oh my... That's a lot of attacks. 23, 25, 28, 30 things being attacked. What is going? Where did all these biters come from? I, it must have been from the south. Because I put in that um, that wall all the way across the top. But, God, look at all that damage. That's ridiculous. That was what... I don't know. That was... What, it was over 30... Certainly over 30 things destroyed. Probably more. And they and they went for some of the more um, expensive things that I care about a bit more this time as well. Which is a pain. <laughs> oh well. Let's go and sleep. At least they're all stuff. It's all stuff that I've got being built automatically, so I, it's not that much of a difficulty. But it's, not, it's still it's it's very annoying. <laughs> so 
Obviously, the next thing to do is going to be to run, run a belt down with the ammo on all the way down to the bottom. And uh, put some turrets in down there as well. Get some more ammunition for myself, though. Um, having just used it all up, taking those biters out. I was quite, I have to admit, I was quite worried then that I was going to run out of ammunition while I was shooting the biters. I got down to two magazines left, which is very, very close. Um, right, so here we go. These are the... Oh, it's, it's, so that was only some worms, which are not so bad, because at least they can't attack my base. They're just there getting in the way and forcing me to shoot at them and stand in their goo. Ooh, that's rather a lot of health lost. Let's um, try and work out how to use a medikit. There we go. Ow. <laughs> You'd think this dodging should be quite easy, wouldn't you? It's just, it's just running up to them and then as soon as they start to spit, running in a different direction. But somehow, I just, I don't know, I just don't seem to be very good at it. <laughs> Oh well. Get some more iron and to to, uh, to build some more inserters. I should start pulling pulling off um, burner inserters from the uh, from the bus as well where they're being made, just so I don't have to build them all in my pockets because it it's a bit of a faff. And later on when I start to do this on it's slightly more automatically, it's going to be even more silly. So oh well. But for now we can just build that down there. I suspect they're probably going to be coming through the bottom gap, although I don't have much evidence for this. So I'm going to build the, um, put a few more turrets in down there. Right, hope. I was going to say I didn't bring any walls down with me, but I think I, I realised later that I actually did have some walls. Um, so I just haven't put them in here um, due to due to fail, basically. But I'm going to also put in some radar with a nice curved. Um, I tried to sketch out a nice curve with the uh, power lines there. I, uh, I think I did a reasonable job of it. Um, yeah, so try and get some radar in to. Um, down there so I can keep an eye on what's going on and yeah that's where all that's that's clearly where that attack came from that's quite a lot of biters down there I'm not looking forward to having to deal with that unless I can get some better weapons first but hopefully those turrets down there will mean that I don't have to worry about it and if I just keep expanding out to the east then to an extent I'm probably just going to be able to ignore it okay that mod there was because the um, the iron wasn't getting used up from the um, from the left hand belt because of the way the it's getting filtered onto the single Oh yeah, here we go. This is the problem. The um, yeah, the coal, the the copper isn't getting used up fast enough, so it's causing things to back up around the, around there. Um, I did come up with a solution for that, but that's uh, obviously going to happen in a couple of minutes. Okay, so back to where I was uh, was before I was so rudely interrupted by the uh, biter uprising. <laughs> Trying to get some lamps up and um, up, uh, built on the uh, off the busps. So here we go. We need copper for the wires and then glass for the actual lamp itself. So I hope just those two, and as usual, box to put them in, and power to the system. There we go, not, not too many of them, please. <laughs> so now we can start making lamps, and maybe next time it night falls, I'll just go around and I'll slap lamps around. Oh, it takes iron as well. <laughs> Learn to count. So yeah, next time light, night falls, I'll just go around and slap in um, lamps at the bottom of lots of the pylons just to keep the areas I'm uh, interested in well lit and uh, give me an idea of what's going on. So yeah, now trying to work out why the iron isn't flowing through properly. Um, now eventually, I, I worked out here, it's because it's getting um, caught up in that... Um, the, the, the bits of coal that are coming through and aren't... No, hang on, it's the copper. It's get, copper and coal is getting caught up in the left-hand side of that. And that was blocking the uh, iron from coming through. So by putting the other inserter beforehand, which takes the cop which takes the coal out from the iron stream, then I can get the. Um, so by getting the coal out of the iron stream before the before it hits the the splitter, it means I can make sure that the iron then gets just gets sorted straight out onto the uh, the left the the other side, and we'll go straight into the furnaces. Right, I think that'll do for one episode. Uh, I hope that's been interesting. There's a couple of things in there I need to I need to polish off and, and um, improve a little bit, but you know I'll get round to that sooner or later. And I hope you enjoyed the show. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.